Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you're well. Thank you for your support, for your love, and for being part of the 60 and Me community. Now, I want to talk to you today about the transitions that we face as we get older and three pillars that allow us to check in with our wise woman <laughs> and to bring that into our purpose and our passion in life. Now, one of our bloggers, Ardith Bowman, wrote this article and it really touched me because I think a lot of women in their 60s and 70s are at these kind of pivotal points of transition. And they, you know, you're focused, of course, on your health, on your mental acuity, and also on living a happy and long life. And this is kind of the, the passion as we as we you know, turn 60 and start to realize that, you know, there's less years ahead than there are behind and I think that's really really important. Now there's three pillars that she talks about are ways to kind of set your wise woman free and there are the three pillars that she talks about in terms of um, appreciating and um, gaining wisdom as we get older are first wisdom with your yourself and connection to your own wisdom. The second is your relationship and with life in general. And then the third thing is your relationship with others. And it's funny, this reminds me um, when I was in Bali, there's a, uh, the three, they call them the three um, concepts or, or basis of, of living and of life. And they're actually very similar in that there's a wisdom between you and yourself, a wisdom between you and nature, and a wisdom between you and other people. So I think in a way, these three pillars that Art is talking about are in some way kind of related. But the first one is, of course, to find your own wisdom. And I think in your in yourself. And I think a lot of times as we get older, we start to feel irrelevant. We talk ourselves into that. We talk ourselves into feeling that we are no longer um, important and that our, 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 our views and our, our knowledge does, does not matter, but it does. And I think connecting with that inner wisdom and with the, the, the role that may have slipped away and the new one that's emerging is really, really powerful. So that wisdom that we've gained through life, through living and through loss, and through, um, you know, just through the complexities of the, the, the plot of our lives, which never unfolded probably the way that we expected it to. But that's the wisdom inside yourself that you need to connect with. And as she, you know, she points out in the article, ignore all the stereotypes. They're not relevant. <laughs> Just ignore all the stereotypes of aging. Listen to your own wisdom. You know, the wisdom that you've gained over your life, over the years and, and your experience and just be yourself and like yourself. That's, I think, the most important thing is to like that person that you've become. The second thing is your relationship with, with you, not just your wisdom, but with you, the person, you know, loving and having a, an acceptance of who you have become. Do you take care of yourself. Are you, are you eating well? Are you exercising? Are you, you know, keeping mentally, physically and spiritually um, you know, connected. Are there parts of you, the you, that are not for some reason being fully accepted and embraced? Are there parts of yourself that are deep, that you perhaps are not holding um, to the light, that you're not ob observing and accepting and, you know, just, and just being at peace with? And we talk about regrets a lot, you know, as you get older and I mean, are there any regrets that you're holding on to, things that you, that you really need to let go of. Maybe they're ignoring or hiding things that are important. Negative self-talk is like the, you know, the thing that we tend to bring into focus during this time of our life. I should have done this, I could have done that, it was my fault, if only I had that kind of, I should have, would have, could have conversation that we had with our children, now we need to have it with ourselves, with, with you. And let all those things that are just hovering in the background that are not letting you be free, come out and be accepted. And I think stop being judgmental with yourself, you know, as well as with other people. And instead of being a worrier, be a warrior, be a warrior in this time of your life. You know, this is the time to dress the way you want, to have the style that you want, to not be, you know, kind of limited or bounded by any other um, definitions of who you are really, really important. Do some uh, positive self-talk. She's got some great quotes here like, there is no one else like me and I love who I am. <laughs> uh, was it be yourself, everyone else is taken. You know, just be yourself. I'm learning and doing my best every single day. I love that, the focus on learning there. I'm learning and I'm just focusing on the best I can be every single day. 
the, another mantra that you can say is, I am perfectly, imperfectly me. <laughs> we're all broken. We're all fragmented. We're all struggling. You know, we've all got a, something, a little level of crazy that, that we're not talking to others about that we, maybe is the most important thing that we were talking about. You know, we talk about all the social, um, you know, connections, all the social uh, things that are meant to be, you know, grounding and acceptable. But let's talk about the crazy things that we hold inside us. So that's the kind of, um, you know, accepting who you are and be courageously myself. That's the next, um, next thing. Be courageously myself. The final thing is your relationship with other people. And I think this is where we, you know, we need to reach out and see, like I just mentioned, that everybody is kind of struggling with their humanness, you know, with their, with their, um, the flaws, with the imperfections. And um, there's a great talk by Alain de Botan. I don't know, he's the, he, he headed up the um, School of Life and a, a real great conversation about how, you know, connecting with others and using that as, you know, kind of a pivotal um, tool for wisdom starts with just being honest with each other. Like, what's what are your flaws? You know, rather than saying, what do you do? Or what what is your business or whatever you know what is your favorite color even it's like what is your crazy habit what what do you do that's a little bit odd or quirky and if you do that you kind of come to the deeper part of yourself and you get to the deeper part of other people too so getting to know each other getting to have a relationship with other people that's deeper than the than the surface that's a, that's the third pillar that is going to set your wise woman free so it's, it's wisdom to your, to yourself or to your acceptance of your own wisdom and embracing your own wisdom, your inner self, acceptance of who you are and acceptance of who, else, who others are. Is that kind of, that's sort of the three pillars to set your wild woman or wise woman free and your wild woman. <laughs> Maybe that's true too. Anyway, one of the things that Ardith talks about in this article, I want to leave you with because I think it's important. And that is some techniques some things that you can do to set this uh, wise woman into action, into motion, and you know, kind of embrace her as part of your future. First thing is to listen to yourself. Whether you meditate or whether you do any kind of other exercise to go within, just take five minutes of silence and ask your wise woman for guidance. You know, if you're trying to make a, a decision about something or you're trying to, you know, just find a path forward or overcome a sadness or deal with a loss, just ask your wise woman and let her be your friend. Let her be your best friend. Welcome her as your best friend. She knows you better than anybody else. So let her in and let her close to you. Let her go deep. The second thing is welcome her as a future version of yourself because that wise woman knows you. <laughs> She knows what is important to you. She knows where you want to go. She knows the life experiences that you want to have. So let her be your best friend, guiding you into the future. If you have a question about the future, ask her. Ask her you know, what guidance she might give you and then listen to the answer because it may not be what you think it is. It may be something completely unexpected. So listen to your wise woman and let her guide you into the future. And I guess the final one that Ardith talks about, and it's a little bit more nebulous and maybe challenging to embrace, and that is tr treat your wise woman as your spiritual guide. Now, whether you view spirit in the very specific sense in that you believe in a God who is guiding your life and who is taking you, know, you forward, or whether it's something that there's something more powerful that I'm connected to, there's been enough magic and mystery in my life that I know there's something more. If, if that's, you know, whatever that um, is to you, let your wise woman, that inner woman, be your spiritual guide. I just love this article. I really, I really find it so inspiring. So I'd like to ask you, you know, how do you access your inner wisdom, your wise woman? And if you tried this exercise of being quiet and trying like a five minute breathing exercise to contact your, your inner woman, wise woman, what did you discover? What did she tell you? I just think it'd be a great conversation. Um, let's talk about the wisdom that can sort of ground us as we move forward into this next wonderful phase of our lives. Please um, feel free to help each other here. There's probably some comments that are going to come up that are going to be a little bit emotional and maybe something that needs some hugs and support. That's what we're here for. We're here for each other. So please leave your comments below. I am going to, I'm with you always. I'm by your side. Take really good care of yourselves and know that you're loved, appreciated and respected and just stay well. 
Take very good care, everybody.